Eyewitness News is everywhere. This is Eyewitness News at 5. I, I mean, I feel like I just want to cry and cry and cry and scream. A horrifying scene from Rhode Island as a packed nightclub goes up in flames. Eyewitnesses tell of a mad scramble for the exits in what's now America's deadliest fire in a decade. Good evening. I'm Denise Desenzo with Al Terzi. We're going to take you right now live to Warwick, Rhode Island, where the governor of Rhode Island is speaking. Well, uh, there was a couple that actually got out. Uh, they actually got out, and they had the presence of mind to know that something was wrong and, and went out the back door. And um, their description to me was that in 30 seconds, 30 seconds, if you weren't out of that building in 30 seconds, you didn't have a prayer. Uh, so it, uh, and there's a whole investigation going on right now uh, as to what caused it exactly, uh, what the materials were that combusted, what kinds of pyrotechnics <laughs> were utilized. That's all ongoing and there's a series of investigations that I won't comment on just to say that that's ongoing. Uh, needless to say, you know, our, our hearts break, as I said to the families in there, for, for all of them. Uh, the, the loss here is just, uh, you know, so terrible. Uh, it's just so terrible. Uh, the thing that I also would say is we should be proud. The response from across the state has just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think virtually every single city in town has been represented either with the rescue crew, an ambulance, a rescue van, uh, whatever. Everybody has come out. Uh, I saw over there people bringing food uh, and drink for the uh, rescue uh, the workers there uh, as they would uh, take a break uh, and the outpouring of uh, you know sympathy and the outpouring of uh, love uh, is just something to behold so uh, I don't know if Dr. Nolan did not come here so uh, Governor, you is that beyond their capacity allowed? Well, I, I don't know that, okay? I should be careful. It just seems to me that that's, 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 that building was not a big building. Talking about the terrible, terrible tragedy in Warwick, Rhode Island no, last night. Uh, he said that he was hearing that people had basically, Al, 30 seconds to run for their lives. The, their investigation is focusing into the cause of this in terms of the materials that were involved and how combustible those materials were. He also praised the rescue efforts of uh, the firefighters there and thanked the community for their support. Well, just to catch everybody up to date, here's what we know right now. The official death toll has now risen to 95. 95 dead, more than 180 others injured. Within the last hour, authorities told us that the final body had been pulled from the still smoldering rubble. And we have team coverage tonight. We'll begin with Channel 3's Dennis House. He's in West Warwick live at the scene of the tragedy. Dennis. Al and Denise, good evening. This was a horrible fire. If you look at the numbers, 86 killed, more than 160 injured. The club holds about 300 people. That means nearly everyone who went to see that concert last night was either killed or injured there. We're also told um, that many people were stampeded. Some people were burned to death. Some people died of smoke inhalation. You can see behind me, rescue workers are still going through the rubble. We're told that they have extricated the last dead body from that scene there, but they are going through looking for evidence and trying to figure out what went wrong last night. What we do know is that it started as a band was performing its first song during a pyrotechnics display that turned catastrophic. Outside, a sign advertising a concert with the 80s rock band Great White. Inside, during the band's very first song, a pyrotechnic show went terribly wrong. All of a sudden, I felt the, like a heat behind me. I turned around, and they had this foam stuff on the walls, which was obviously not flame retardant. And it started smoking, so I looked around and throw some water on it. I you know, tried to do anything. Witnesses describe a horrible scene as fire engulfed the club in just minutes. I believe it was a, um, like a, sort of like a, spark machine to kind of like a pyrotechnics machine and it, it shot off to do like sort of a firecracker like image type thing but it caught fire onto the foam padding that lines the walls mainly I guess in back of the stage 
and it caught fire and it, it, it just took very quickly. I think there was a trampling, you know, a panic, screaming, trampling. That's how I that's how I've been sort of hearing it for some of the injured. And there are some people here that are really badly hurt. Burns, the blood, and from from what I gather in just passing with some people that I, I think maybe some people have have expired. People are running out on fire. It's pretty much pretty probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Now everybody's missing people. I'm missing. I can't find them. I don't. I don't even know what happened. Rhode Island Governor Don Carcieri says his top priority right now is identifying the victims and dealing with the victims' families, helping them cope through this tremendous loss. But many people here are also demanding answers. As far as the investigation, we can tell you that there are two owners of the club, which was called the station, Michael and Jeff Dudarian, both native Rhode Islanders. They say, through a statement through their lawyers, that they did not authorize the band to perform a pyrotechnics display. The lead singer of the band, Great White, says he was given permission mission to have a pyrotechnics display and the type of display we're talking about as you saw in the video was sort of like a sparkler that you'd see at the fireworks and it caught fire to the walls set fire to the walls rather which were covered in sort of a foam egg carton type of material in order to deafen the sound and soundproof that room and that apparently went up it was also right over the band so the fire went up and around them and then over and into the crowd there are many family members coming down here to the scene trying to get some sort of a closure and trying to find some answers trying to find out if their loved one was inside we can tell you that many people as we mentioned were either stampeded they died of smoke inhalation or were burned and many people you can probably presume by the video we showed you were almost out of the building probably thinking to themselves that they're going to make it denise and al back to you all right dennis reporting live from west warwick rhode island and we'll continue our coverage there live throughout the next 90 minutes and area hospitals are full of victims suffering from burns and smoke inhalation dozens were rushed by ambulance to kent hospital in west warwick last night the hospital treated at least 60 patients today half of those are now at home Rhode Island Hospital in Providence treated 63 people. 14 of those are still in critical condition tonight. Throughout the day today, friends and families have gathered at the fire scene in West Warwick, uh, waiting for word about their loved ones. Some have actually gone hospital to hospital, trying to desperately find a loved one. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Len Bestoff is now live in West Warwick with that part of the story. Len? Well, Al, it's amazing all the family and friends you see out here coming out here and wading through this horde of media, police and fire personnel. But they say they come here because they have to. If anyone saw her, unconscious or not, please let us know we're in Coventry, Rhode Island. For a second, you might think this is from 9-11, with people holding up photos of missing loved ones. Of course, it's not. For those living it, like Angela McDonald, who can't find her niece, 25-year-old Bridget Sinetti, it's just as real. I'm hoping she's alive, but I don't think that she could be. I don't know, but where is she? Why won't they tell us? Then there's musicians and people associated with the rock club, like Wendy Drown, originally from Manchester, Connecticut, who's still looking for 10 of her friends. It doesn't help that the parade of body bags keeps coming right out in front of their eyes. It, it's really starting to sink in. And, uh, and I'm just, <laughs> they were such good people. I'm, I'm wanting them to be okay. Kelly. These people, there's some relief when they learn a friend made it out alive. Former station employee Mario Giami still can't feel good about anything, though, even though he pulled out a lot of people from that inferno. I mean, we couldn't get anybody else out. That's the, that's the hard part, man. We couldn't get anybody else out. You know, couldn't get anybody else out. Now, coming up at 6, we'll have the story of a Stonington man who was at this club last night. He had fortunately made it out alive, but we'll also tell the story of the cousin that rushed up here thinking he was going to have to save him. That's coming up at 6 on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. I'm live in Le uh, Len Bestoff, live in West Warwick, Rhode Island, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And we're still waiting at this hour to see whether any of the fire victims might have been from Connecticut. The Red Cross has set up an information hotline for families of the victims. Here's the number you call, 401-462-7111. That's 401-462-7111, the Red Cross. And amid the tragedy, there are tales of heroism, men and women risking their own lives to save others. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Susan Rapp is live in West Warwick with one such tale. Susan? 
Denise, we spoke to so many people here today, many of them in shock and many devastated. Among them in the crowd was a man sitting in a corner crying. He was in the club last night when it caught fire. He actually risked his life to save people from the burning flames. I was maybe at the most 10 to 12 feet from the stage. And when those pyrotechnics went off and ignited that um, soundproofing, it just, it was unbelievable how, how fast it went up. Jesse Patello says the band had only been playing a few minutes when the stage caught fire. He says at that point, everyone panicked and started running towards the front door. With the individual in front of me kicked the window open. He got out, another person got out. I was, at that very second, the smoke was right on my back and flames. And I just jumped out. And the first thing I had was to, was, to, was to spring up and just pull as many as I could through the window. He says within three minutes, the entire club was in flames. Jesse considers himself lucky. He was only scraped while trying to get out the window. The only thing now he wishes he could have saved more people. It was so hot. Was, and then I looked to the front of the, the, the building, um, the front entrance, and I see the people laying there crawling to get out, begging for help. And I pulled as many as I could. Jesse Botello says everything happened so fast, but one thing he will never forget is the people that were lying on the ground screaming. He will also never be able to forget what happened and also the helplessness that he felt of not being able to do more. We're live in West Warwick, Rhode Island, Susan Raff, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Now, Great White, the band playing when that fire broke out, was scheduled to play in Hartford this weekend. The group was booked at the Webster Underground. That show has been postponed indefinitely. Guitarist Ty Longley is among the missing tonight. Pyrotechnics were not going to be a part of the band's show at the Webster. Well, how do you think you'd react if a fire were to break out in a crowded venue where you were? We'll see what you can do to increase your chances of getting out alive. Another deadly fire tonight, this one in New York, as a refinery turns into a massive fireball. You're watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 5. Eyewitness News is everywhere. Eyewitness News is everywhere as Blizzard Daniel blankets the state. Blizzard Daniel is taking a big toll on Connecticut. Eyewitness News is everywhere right now. More live coverage. We're live in New Haven. Now, we've been all over Connecticut this afternoon. More crews on the streets. More of the vital weather information you needed to know. Heavy snow falling across much of northern Connecticut now. Coastal areas are under a flood watch. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Eyewitness News is everywhere for you. A lot of rain is on the way for the weekend. Some freezing rain, too, when it all begins coming up. When you can't watch Eyewitness News, you can still get the late-breaking news coverage you need by logging on to WFSB.com, your source for the most complete local news coverage on the web. New Joe Millionaire, Michael Jackson, and Lisa Marie Presley. Next DT. You're watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 5. Eyewitness News is everywhere. And we continue to follow the top story tonight, the deadly nightclub fire in Rhode Island. Officials have been searching what remains of the nightclub, which is called The Station in West Warwick. All day long they've been there, and right now the death toll has risen to 95, with at least 180 people injured. We do have a team of Eyewitness News reporters on the scene in West Warwick, and we'll continue to bring you new developments as they happen. The other big story today, a massive explosion at a Staten Island oil storage facility leaves one person dead, one hospitalized, and another person is still missing tonight. The explosion happened this morning while thousands of barrels of gasoline were being unloaded, sending black flames and smoke shooting hundreds of feet in the air over New York City skies. That's the voice of a traffic pilot overhead over the scene. The blast also shook nearby homes and poured untold amounts of gasoline into the water. Officials were quick to point out that this was not an act of terror. That Staten Island explosion, however, could affect the price we pay for gasoline. That's for sure. Eyewitness News reporter Annie Rourke live in New Haven with that. Annie? Well, Al, the price of a barrel of crude oil rose about 60 cents on the stock market today because of what happened in Staten Island. That could translate to an increase of about two to three cents in the price of gasoline, and that could go into effect immediately. The price of gas has already jumped 55 cents a gallon this year. We're told 80% of consumers are now buying regular, the cheapest. The stores of gasoline are there. The crunch hasn't come yet, and yet the prices are rising. One really wonders what the source of it is. People at the pumps are afraid will now be paying even more. 
I'm not willing to pay until I start taking the bus. <laughs> I will. I, I'd rather go back to public transportation if I have to pay that amount of money for gas. And what could help is right in our harbor, the Northeast Home Heating Oil Reserve, a million barrels of crude oil stored right in New Haven. But the Department of Energy tells Eyewitness News that reserve is tapped into only to relieve a supply crisis for oil and gas, not a price problem. And it's only done as a direct request from the president. Those whose business now hangs in the balance say it'd be nice to see some relief wherever it comes from. Gas is so high now. Uh, it's sometimes like you're afraid to get up on a ladder. Some angry motorists might come by and just pull the ladder away from you. That's how uh, angry the motorists are. Now, the supply for crude oil is at a 28-year low, and with the unstable situation in the Middle East, the crisis in Venezuela, the unbelievably cold weather that we've had this winter, and in addition, that situation in Staten Island, the Department of, e of Energy tells us they are, that they are keeping a very close eye on New England, but at this point, there are no plans to tap into that reserve behind me. We're live in New Haven, Annie Rourke, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And it's Friday, so what else is to be expected except for a lot of traffic moving in through Hartford? We're looking at delays now along 91 as we show you a live shot of traffic in 91 in both directions to and from the Windsor exit right in and out of Hartford. You also find southbound traffic moving in through Weathersfield, so if you're expecting someone home, chances are it's going to take them just a little bit longer. As we look live at traffic into New Haven, the southbound side of 91 is still pretty heavy from exit 3 right into the merge with 95. Traffic on the northbound side leaving New Haven is looking fine right now, but moving out of Branford into the New Haven stretch, you'll find delays from the Branford rest. You'll notice the southbound traffic here from exit 53. I'm Rachel Lutzker with the Connecticut Lottery Time Saver Traffic Report. Tomorrow's Powerball jackpot is $42 million. Accurate, dependable. Now, eyewitness weather with your live Doppler 3000 future cast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Bruce DePriest. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Our temperature got up to 54 in Hartford today. Many places in the 40s and low 50s. And if you're going out this evening, you'll be in good shape. Uh, cloudy skies, but no rain early this evening. Let's go outside to Hartford, where we have uh, mostly cloudy skies on this Friday evening. And temperatures are pretty mild out there. Well, check them out. Hartford to 49, Windsor Locks is 48, Waterbury 45. Some other temperatures, well, look at this. The shoreline is much cooler in the 30s with a wind off those uh, cold waters of Long Island Sound. All right, we do have a winter weather advisory in effect for late tonight and Saturday for freezing rain, pockets of freezing rain in northern Connecticut, northern Fairfield, and northern New Haven counties as well. I think it will be pockets of freezing rain and not necessarily a widespread problem. In addition to that, Flood watches are in effect for all of southern Connecticut for tomorrow and Saturday night for a rainfall one to two inches. We've been talking about that for the last couple of days. Rain is now moving up across Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Anytime after midnight, it could be starting in Connecticut, and the storm goes all the way back to the deep south. So we've got a long ways to go. 